The scaphoid shift test or the Kurt Watson maneuver is a sign that's thought to be provocative for scaphoid lunar instability. It all revolves around the fact that the scaphoid flexes and extends with radial and ulnar deviation. FCR tendon can be palpated on the volar radial aspect of the wrist. Distal to it is the scaphoid tubercle. Radial deviation it becomes more obvious, ulnar deviation it becomes less obvious. Ulnar deviation it's extended and radial deviation it's flexed. The scaphoid tubercle has to flex forwards in radial deviation because the radial styloid gets in the way and the scaphoid has to move out of the way. It can't physically abut against the radial styloid. So in the normal course of events, the radius styloid moulds the scaphoid to flex forwards. In a scaphoid at dissociation, the scaphoid can be prevented partially from flexing forward by thumb pressure on the scaphoid tubercle. Normally, with all the deviation going into radial deviation, the scaphoid powers forwards and flexes and can lift off the thumb. But in a scaphoid dissociation, the thumb can prevent the scaphoid from flexing forwards. The scaphoid has to go somewhere because it can't abut against the radial styloid and what it does is it pops out of the back and causes discomfort on the dorsal aspect of the radius. So the Kurt Watson manoeuvre is the thumb of the examiner is on the scaphoid tubercle. The index finger is on the proximal pole of the scaphoid, which is just distal and radial to Lister's tubercle. The patient's in full ulnar deviation and comes through into radial deviation. And the patient will notice a clunk that is painful. And that is the Kurt Watson manoeuvre.